So this one's called Great Geezer. Great Geezer, yeah. Great Geezer. So I'm going to talk about statistical analysis. This is deriving from first principles an equation that shows that average kinetic energy is proportional to temperature, and temperature is proportional to average kinetic energy. Underground, they call this the geothermal fluid, which is water that's superheated. It can be water at high temperatures like 200 above boiling point because of the extra pressure when it comes out at ground level, then it will almost instantly boil. Idea of statistical analysis in kinetic theory and proving that temperature is, is the average kinetic en energy of the molecules. Is statistical physics, so we're imagining a large number of particles moving according to the laws of probability, so with kind of average motion, etc. So imagine a large room and imagine one particle moving to the left uh, with a initial speed u. That particle is going to collide with this wall here. This wall, let's just put dimensions on, this is x, this is the z dimension, and this is y. This wall here has area z, y, and we'll come back to that in just a little moment. So what's happening to it, it has a mass m, and it has a speed u, so it's a momentum mu, and it has a change in momentum minus 2 mu when it hits this wall. So Newton's second law defines the force as a change in momentum over time. So if you imagine one of those particles hitting the side of the wall and then coming back the way it came, its momentum's changed, it's done a force on the side of the wall. Yep. Now if those particles are moving around faster, then it does a greater force, okay, because both the momentum changes higher and the time it took to do that is lower as well, so the force is greater. It has a force of minus 2 mu over t. It's going to essentially shuttle between this wall and this wall, the left wall and the right wall in the x dimension, and it's going to do collisions in time t. So where are we going to get the time from? Well, if we think about it doing shuttles from left to right in dimension x, we, we know the time is equal to the distance divided by the speed. It's going to hit this wall x, y just once in this time, 2x over u. So let's substitute that into our equation for the force. It's minus 2mu times by u over 2 x, which is minus mu squared over x. So fluid pressure is the same as normal pressure. It's force over area. <laughs> it's just sort of going off. Um, <laughs> it's force over area still, but it's the force of all those little tiny particles. So we call this bit, we call this kind of like statistical physics. And we're talking about, you know, giant numbers of these little tiny particles. So that's an expression for the force on that wall the force in the x dimension, the average force in the x dimension. Now I'm going to bin the negative since it doesn't really matter, it could, it's just the force on the x dimension. And I'm going to start talking about pressure. Now pressure is a force over an area. And the pressure in the x dimension is the force in the x dimension, which is that expression there, over the area y, z. Think about our box here. We're talking about the pressure on this wall here, which I'm just shading now. So when I take this equation here that I've just derived for the force and bin off the minus and substitute that into this, I get this equation for pressure in the x dimension, mu squared over x times y, z. And what is x, y, z? It is the volume of our box. And you have to really derive that over the three kind of different dimensions and um, then come to the realization that uh, you're talking about an average speed. But because they're all going in different directions, we use what's called a root mean square speed. Now we need to start to generalize to a large number of particles. So the pressure in the x dimension becomes the number of particles multiplied by the mass times the average speed squared. Now I want you to think about what's really going on because we've only done one particle so far. And what's really going on is there's many, 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 many more particles in this room full of gas, this box full of gas. So what is this u squared here? This is this mean square speed. 
So the particles are actually going in all different directions. And some are actually hitting the Z wall, some are hitting the Y wall, and some are hitting the X wall. So in fact, the kind of total pressure, if you like, is given by this. 3P is equal to the pressure in the X plus the pressure in the Y plus the pressure in the Z. So these are the pressures that we can derive in this exact same way, giving pressure Y is equal to Nm uh, W squared. And again, pressure Z would just be Nm V squared. And, and they're just symbols for the initial speed of those particles that are actually shuttling in the Y or the Z dimension. So I can sum all these as n m u squared plus w squared plus v squared all over v. Now here's where we want to get rid of the dimensions and we want to talk about just the average speed of the particles. So we use what's called a mean square speed or RMS speed, which is c. So our mean square speed is going to be c squared, and that is equal to this expression here, u squared plus w squared plus v squared. Reminds you of Pythagoras, that doesn't it? So now, and just to put it all on one line, I'm going to move the 3 and I'm going to move the v as I do this. So PV equals NMC squared over 3. We're interested in the scalar form of the particle's motion because we're talking about their kinetic energy. And what you get is, to, is uh, to this equation, which I'll put here, which essentially shows that temperature is proportional to that average kinetic energy of the molecules. And the average kinetic energy of the molecules, you'll see this little funny uh, C squared in brackets, that is their root mean square speed, which means their kind of speed in any given direction. I hope you can see now you're getting somewhere near to an expression that's somewhere near kinetic energy, because kinetic energy is half mv squared or well, the average kinetic energy in this case would be half mc squared. But where are we going to get temperature from? We're going to get temperature from the ideal gas equation. So the ideal gas equation is PV equals nkt, where this is the pressure of the gas, this is the volume of the gas, this is the number of particles, this is the Boltzmann constant, and this is the, con this is the absolute temperature. When you, when you are using this equation, um, you need to make sure that you use temperature in kelvins, okay, because we're talking absolute temperature. If you see capital T, use temperature in kelvins, okay, because we're talking absolute temperature, which is temperature in degrees kelvin. Our expression was PV equals a third nmc squared. And so now I can just make nkt equal a third nmc squared. There's a bit more cancelling that we can do. We can get rid of the um, ends and we can move the 3 across to this other side here. So I get 3kt equals mc squared. And I'm really close to kinetic energy now. Uh, I just have to introduce the half. So divide everything by 2. So I get 3 over 2 kt equals a half m c squared. And well, that's what kinetic energy is. So I have shown now that temperature is proportional to kinetic energy. Temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So as the temperature rises, so the molecules all move faster. That higher speed means higher forces, more frequent collisions with the walls of the container and importantly the water above them in this geyser, in this underground chamber. And as soon as there's enough force that will overcome the weight of the water and push that water out and that's when the geyser erupts. I hope that makes sense. That is one of my least favourite derivations in all available physics because of the confusing bit where you think of about all those different dimensions. But I think you just need to be able to express that the mean square speed is 
the sum of the speeds in all the square speeds in all the different directions. Thank you.